What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to slice by a measure. This isn't possible by default, so I'm gonna show you this awesome trick in order to use that measure value in a slicer to filter other visuals. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. We see that we have a table here on the left side. It's just showing my total sales, which is a measure split up by my month year, such as January 13, February 13. So we have this total sales measure value for each month, and we have a slicer here that is going to allow us to filter down this measure here. Firstly, we can see that our slicer is only showing us values from 2.8 million to 5.3 million. And if we sort my table here, we can see that the minimum value of the total sales measure is 2.8 million and the maximum value is 5.3 million. So we can already start to see that our slicer is dynamic to our measure values, but we can then slice our table to just show us measure values within this specified range. This is so cool and it's dynamic based on your filter context. Let me go ahead and expand this out to its entire range. Now let's filter down a little bit more. So let's filter down to a certain customer category and we can see that our allowed slicer values is actually changing based on the min and max values of our measure. So we now see that our minimum value is 135,000, which is our lowest total sales value. Let's actually sort this real quick. We see that our maximum value is 442,000 and that's why our selection range is so small. And just to really nail this home, let's drill down to a very small section of data, such as a single city. And we now see that our selection range is very small from 500 to 17,000. This really isn't hard to do. It just takes two measures. So let's go ahead and start setting this up in another file. Here we are in the demo file. We see that we have our table set up, but we don't have any slicer set up. So let's go ahead and start setting up that slicer. Let's go to our data view. And I'm gonna go to table tools and click on new table. And we want to create a table of numerical values that's going to feed that slicer. So I'm just gonna call this number filter, but feel free to call this whatever you want. And I'm gonna use the handy generate series uh, function here. And this is going to create a numerical series from a start value to an end value and even allow us to set a certain increment. Logically, I'm going to start from zero and I am going to throw in my total sales measure as my max value. And I'm doing that because if I want to slice by our total sales measure, we want to ensure that we have the maximum value of that measure present if needed. If we don't split up our total sales measure by a date or by some sort of category, we may have the entire total sales value available to us. So I am going to leave it just as total sales. You can change this to whatever measure that you wanna use for this trick. And after that, I am going to increment by let's say 1000. I'm gonna close that off. And that's going to create values from zero to my maximum total sales value incremented by a thousand. And let's go ahead and drag all the way down here. We see that my maximum total sales value is somewhere around I believe that is 177 million and incremented by a thousand. That is roughly 177,000 rows of data. That actually doesn't take up too much space in the Power BI model. I did a quick test and it takes about one megabyte. If you don't need to be that granular and space is a major consideration, go ahead and change this increment to maybe 10,000 if you really don't need to be that granular. And now you see we only have 17,000 records here. I'm gonna change this back to 1,000. And then I'm going to go back to my report canvas and take a slicer. Let me find a slicer here. And let's drag this over and put it in a nice place. And I now have this table called number filter and I'm gonna throw in my value. So this is gonna show zero to that 177 million, but this isn't going to do anything right now. It's not slicing anything. Next, let's make our slicer filter down our table. So we can do that by creating a new measure. And I'm going to call this one, uh, I think I'm gonna call it measure filter. Measure filter. And I want to create a couple of variables. I wanna call this min value. And I want this to be min of my new number filter value table that we just created. I wanna do the exact same thing for the max value. So this had this equal to max of my number filter value. So what we're doing is we're basically getting this bottom number and this top number. And then I'm gonna create one more variable for my current measure value. It's a long name, but it makes sense, current measure value. And this is just our total sales measure. 
So this is basically signifying what value we're looking at within our visual. And then all we need to do is return an if statement. And we'll say if current measure value is greater than or equal to that min value. And, and current measure value is less than or equal to that max value. If so, let's just return a one, else return a zero. So right off the bat, if we wanna be very thorough, let's go ahead and expand this a bit and throw in our new measure filter on our table. We see that these are all zeros for these month years without total sales, but let's actually look at the ones with numbers here. So we see that these are all zeros because the minimum value here that we select is around 49 million. So none of these values fall within this filter range. Let's extend this down to zero and we'll see all these show as one. But the moment we extend our range to not include these measure values, it goes to zero. So this is going to allow us to filter down our table based on the selected range. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of measure filter but instead we need to open up the filter pane and let's throw our measure filter in the add data fields here. And I wanna say where that measure filter is one based on our logic. So that's not gonna do anything yet because we have included all these values. But if we then change this filter, we see that those values are actually going away because they don't fall within the range. So that is perfect. So that doesn't look too great right now because our slicer selections don't ever change and this range is way too big. So now we can make this slicer range dynamic based on all of the filters being applied, especially if you want to drill deeper down into that data. Let's create a second measure and I'm going to call this one slicer filter. Slicer filter. Firstly, I'm going to create a virtual table and I will just call this virtual. And I'm gonna set this equal to the summarize function. And I am simply going to mirror what this table looks like here, this table visual. And I can do that by referencing my date table and the month year column. And just keep in mind that I set up this table to show us our total sales by that month year column. So that is why I want to summarize or group by that month year column. And then finally, I'm going to create a new column called sales and reference my total sales measure. So looking at that again, we are basically creating this exact same table visual by summarizing the date table, grouped by the month year column, and then just having a column called sales, which is my total sales measure. Let's go down a line and create a new variable called min value again. And this is simply going to be min X of my virtual table and that sales column. So once we create a table that looks like this, give me the minimum value that we have in that sales column. We're gonna do the exact same thing for max value. So max X of that virtual table, sales column. So give us that maximum value. One more variable here, just to be efficient, I'm gonna call this current slicer value. And I'm gonna set this equal to selected value of my number filter. So this is my slicer value and close that off. And now let's return a very similar if statement saying if current slicer value is greater than or equal to min value and and current slicer value is less than or equal to max value. Let's return a one again or a zero. And just to run through that again, this current slicer value is getting the selected value of our slicer. So looking at the current value of the slicer and evaluating to see if it is greater than or equal to our min value of our table and also checking if that slicer value is less than or equal to the max value of our table. So it's kind of the opposite of what we did in the previous measure. So let's go ahead and click enter. And now let's click on the slicer and add that slicer filter into the data fields and say that the slicer filter is one. Apply that filter and we can see that our range has already changed. And real quick, I'm going to close our filter pane and make our text values a little bit bigger just so that we can make sure that we can see this. So in our numeric inputs, I'm gonna make that like size 14. So nice and easy to read. And also on my number filter table for value, I'm going to give that a comma so we know exactly how large that value is. So we see that our range is already from our table minimum to our table maximum here at 5.3 million. And one very important last step, let's make sure that all of our slicers can filter the other slicers. We can do that by clicking on a certain slicer and going to format and edit interactions. Let's make sure that these slicers, these other slicers affect our value slicer. 
So I'm going to do that for all of my slicers on this page. So now when I slice by a certain city, let's choose this random city, we can see that our slicer values are changing to show the table minimum and table maximum. And now we can slice based on our slicer selections to slice down or filter down this table visual shown on our left side. And finally, I'm gonna get rid of my edit interactions. And I hope you can see how powerful this is. We're actually filtering a visual based on a measure and that slicer is dynamic based on the possible measure values, that measure value range from our visual that we're slicing. So it's kind of a back and forth thing that all works out really nicely in the end. I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you wanna tackle this challenge with this same sample data, you can gain access to it if you enroll in any of our BI Elite training courses over at training.bielite.com. The link is always down in the description and I'll see you in the next video.